always finishes. There is no Wi-Fi in the house. And we always run out of GB. And I'm sure most of your homes, you might be facing this problem. Uh, see, when I say revival is in the air, um, what it means is, it's like connecting to your Wi-Fi, right? Uh, when you walk into your home, you don't have to, you know, you have to log in and you have to connect to your Wi-Fi, but once you do that, once you have the password, and once you save the settings, whenever you walk into your house, before you connect to your family, before you connect to anyone else, the moment it detects, uh, when you, as you are walking in, it connects to your phone. And your phone, always, you're always connected to a Wi-Fi. And when you walk into your office, when I walk into church, immediately, even before I could know it, my phone or I get connected to the Wi-Fi that is in my office, right? So when I say revival is in the air, this is the picture that, that I have about the church, right? This is a picture. When you walk into your home, not just in your church, not, not just in here in this worship atmosphere, you get connected to God, right? To connect to Wi-Fi, you don't need to really think about it, you know, talk about it, and it happens, right? So if you have faith for Wi-Fi, right? Today, I want to invite you today. Let's have faith for revival, amen? There is revival in the air. Right? Wi-Fi, you never see it. It's not tangible. You're not, you don't feel it. You don't, you don't really... But you just connect. Right? So you've got faith for Wi-Fi. Right? But I believe today that God is calling the church to have faith for revival because revival is in the air. Right? Now, it's very easy to say that revival is in the air in an atmosphere like this where worship is so good, you know, and everybody's praising God, everybody's dressed up well, and we are here to worship God. It's very easy to connect here. But the revival that I'm seeing, the revival that we are looking forward to, and the revival that we are believing God for, is, you know, you will not have to think about it, you will have to, not have to, but when you take faith out of this place, when you walk into your workplace, you are going to connect it to the revival that is in the air. Amen? When you walk into your home, revival is in the air. And you are going to immediately get connected. Amen? Amen? You know what the password is? Usually, Pastor Michael's office, I never get the Wi-Fi because he never shares the password with us, right? But we want to share the password with you. The password is, okay, write it down. Right? The password for this Wi-Fi or the revival, if you want to connect to revival. The password is J E S. U S. Can someone say amen to that? Right? That's the password. That's the name that is above every other name. That's the name that died for us, that redeemed us, that saved us, that delivered us, and that has restored us. And that gives us the privilege and the ability to connect to the spiritual revival that is in the air. Amen, church? Amen. So whenever you, wherever you go, take Jesus with you. Take, that's the password. Carry Christ because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. And when you take Christ, that's the password. Immediately, you get connected to the revival that is in the air. And I'm praying that there will be such an outpouring over your life. There's, there'll be a, such a stirring in your heart that you will never forget the password. That is Jesus. That you will not limit Jesus just when you walk into church on Sunday, but you will take Jesus wherever you go. Amen? Amen? Are you with me, church? Revival is in the air. Turn to your neighbor and say, revival is in the air. Revival is in the air. Right? And, I mean, some of you, when you walk in the streets, God will connect you to people. And you will pray for people and then people will get healed on the streets. Can you believe that? Can you say amen to that if you believe that? Right? When you go marketing in the morning, maybe to the vegetable man, right? God will give you a word of knowledge. God will give you a word of wisdom to speak to that vegetable man. As a result of you connecting to the revival that is in the air, that man will be blessed. That man will connect to Jesus. But it takes faith for, and Jesus 
for you to connect to the revival that is in the air. For my message today, the title of my message is called The Battle for Revival. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 to 19. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? Well, they replied, Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, But who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, You are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock, and upon this rock I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven now the reason why God brings a revival is not just to impact you and I but he brings a revival to impact a city a community a society or a nation right the revival that we are talking about and believing God for is not going to be limited to a religious location, right? Or to the four walls of this church. But the revival we see can happen anytime. It can happen anywhere. It can happen with anyone. And that's the kind of revival that is in the air. That's the kind of revival that God wants to usher in to our midst. And what is the definition of revival, right? What is the definition of revival, right? It means life or an exceptional improvement of a condition, right? Exceptional improvement of a condition. That's what revival means, right? If we are to see a spiritual awakening, it's going to have a ripple effect. When, you know, every person here, you, you have a spirit, you have a soul, and then you have a body. When there is a spiritual awakening in your spirit, it's going to have a ripple effect, right? It's going to affect your soul. It's going to have an impact on your body. And the same way, as a nation, as a society, right, when there is a spiritual awakening, there is going to be economic revival. There's going to be political revolution, right? And there's going to be social transformation, right? And that's what revival should look like. As a result of God visiting our nation, as a result of God visiting our city, right? It's not just the Christian community that is going to benefit out of that. But, it, but everyone else around us, everyone else, every community that is around us should benefit out of that, should be blessed out of that. And that is the kind of revival that I'm talking about. Today, you know, I believe now is the time. This is a kairos moment. It is a God moment, right? To usher in a move of God. And this is not just for a segment of church, segment in the church, right? This is not just a segment in the church. You know, last month has, as I shared, you know, God, I want to thank God for what, what He has begun in the young people. I mean, there is a tremendous hunger, there is a tremendous passion, you know, around the country, among young people. And we are seeing young people getting attracted to the presence of God like never before. I mean, people have longed to see that. People have prayed for that. And today, now is the moment has come for Sri Lanka. We are, we are seeing young people around the country, right? They're coming and experiencing God. They're carrying revival. I mean, they're praying for the sick. They're operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And they, they are carrying the revival that God is ushering into this nation. But do you know that, that this revival is not limited only to a segment called youth, right? Because in my Bible, it says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. It says, your sons and daughters will prophesy and your old men will dream dreams, amen, right? And your young men will see visions. So this revival does not exclude any segment in the church, but this revival actually includes everyone. It invites everyone. It invites the sons and daughters. It invites the young men. It invites the old as well. 
And I believe this is the moment for Sri Lanka. This is, now is the time for the church to rise up and connect to the revival that is in the air. Where the young and the old will come together and bridge generations and will begin to see the greatest days that is ahead of us. That they will walk together. And I believe this, this forum here, this congregation here, this is a picture of what revival should look like. You have the sons, you have the daughters, then you have the young men, and then you have the old as well. The young and the old coming together. See, the church has to be prepared and positioned to usher in this awakening. If we are not prepared, if we are not positioned, God will never be able to usher in because according to what we read in Matthew, he says, Jesus instituted or he ordained the church. And this is the first time you see in the Bible the term church is mentioned. When Jesus said, I will build my church, this is the first time in the Bible that the term church is mentioned. And this is what Jesus is doing. And if you read that entire chapter, when he ordains the church, he was addressing two issues. If you read the entire chapter, you will understand the context. Number one problem was, there was a generation, Pharisees and Sadducees, you know, came to Jesus and asked, give us a sign from heaven. And Jesus was very angry at this uh, I mean, request. He said, he calls them, you faithless and you adulterous generation. Why are you asking for signs? I mean, today if we look around, we see people are obsessed with signs and wonders. People are obsessed with miracles that they forget the miracle worker. They forget who God is. And Jesus, in this context, He's redefining the church. He's saying, you are faithless and you are adulterous. You know, the word adulterous, it, it doesn't mean a physical adultery, but it means spiritual adultery. It means spiritual adultery where you are so obsessed, you are so in love with signs and wonders and blessings and promises that you have forgotten the promiser, the one who blesses you. You have forgotten. I mean, Moses and Joshua, when they, were, uh, when they climbed up the mountain and God gave them the Ten Commandments, they handed over the Israelites to Aaron and said, you look after the Israelites until we go up to the mountain and get a revelation from God and come down. So while they went up, the, the people of Israel, they were complaining, right? Because they wanted something tangible. They wanted something, you know, something that is visible, right? So, so they complained to Aaron and said, let us build idols and worship God. Let us build idols, right? So Aaron said, because he couldn't, he couldn't really take the complaint and the grumbling and the mumbling. So he said, okay, go ahead, take all the gold, Right, take your gold and take all the earrings that you have, put all the gold together. I mean, just imagine how rich you have to be, right? To have all the gold there and to build an idol, a calf, right? An idol, right? He, they built an idol and they started worshiping God. So Moses and Joshua were up in the mountain and God had just given them the two tablets and they were coming down the mountain. And the moment when, when Joshua uh, is, when Joshua hears, the people, uh, people, people worshipping the idols, right? Joshua tells Moses, um, I hear, I hear the cry of war. I hear a war happening, right? When he hears the noise. Right? And then what Moses is saying is very profound. And I feel that it's going to be profound to this message. He says, it is not the sound of victory, that I hear, and it is not the sound of defeat that I hear, but I hear the sound of singing. I hear the sound of singing. What were the people of Israelites doing there? Right? They had turned away from God and they were worshipping other idols and they have forgotten that they had a battle to fight for revival. They had a battle to fight to enter the promised land. And today, this is the sound. Sometimes we hear you know, it is not the sound of victory, it is not the sound of defeat, but we hear the sound of people singing to other idols and other gods. But I believe there is a time 
that is going to come in Sri Lanka, that we are going to hear the sound of victory in Sri Lanka. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the church has to rise up and they got to stay in battle. If you do not stay in battle, you will never be able to see a revival in this nation. The church has to rise up and they must come into battle. And the other problem that Jesus was uh, addressing when he ordained the church was he said, the, he was talking about the east of the Pharisees, right? The first the Pharisees and Sadducees came and asked for signs, sign from heaven, and he rebukes them. And he says, I will not give you anything. And he left them. And the second time, the second when they went out of, went out of the city, the, he tells the disciples, be on your guard. Jesus tells the disciples, be on your guard. In Matthew chapter 16, Verse 6, it says, be careful, Jesus said to them. He, he's telling the disciples here, be on your guard against the east of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they did not understand what Jesus was saying, right? When they heard this, east of the Pharisees, is he talking about bread? Because we don't have bread around, right? And they were looking for a bakery, right, to look for bread. They thought Jesus was talking about bread there. But then Jesus rebukes them and he, he reveals them to them and says, in verse 12 it says, then they understood that he was not telling them to guard against the east used in the bread but against the teachings of the Pharisees and Sadducees. The teachings. Jesus was addressing, when he ordained the church, he was addressing a problem. That was the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees back in the day. And today, we may see this. I mean, what does the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees represent? It represents legalism. It represents false religion. It represents traditionalism. And I believe God wants to break out. He wants to break out, break us out of traditionalism. He wants to break us out, out from legalism. He wants to break us out from false religion. And he said, be on your guard. And then... Jesus says to Peter, Peter, the revelation that you have received is not from human, but it is from my heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Can you say that? My heavenly Father. Right. You have a heavenly Father who can give you a revelation. And Peter says, my heavenly Father has revealed this. So Jesus says to Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church. Jesus was ordaining the church, the identity, the purpose, and the destiny of the church in a time where people were looking for signs and wonders. And when people were going after or burdened with legalism and false religion, Jesus is saying, in the midst of that, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. God is, Jesus was calling the church into spiritual battle. And he's saying, it's not signs and wonders that matters. It's not the teachings of the Pharisees that matters. That's not what, what you're called to. What you are called to is to defeat the gates of hell. How many of you are getting what I'm saying? It, it is to defeat the gates of hell because when you rise up, there is spiritual authority there is spiritual power and spiritual anointing that comes into the space that you occupy. But what the enemy will try to do is to keep the church out of battle. It's like the Israelites. They built their idols and they started worshipping their own gods. But it's not the singing of victory. It is not the sound of defeat that God hears. Today I want to ask this question to you. Does your worship, does your life bring the sound of victory to God? Does it bring the sound of victory to God? Because God has already given us victory. Amen? Let me tell you a few things about this battle. Okay, The battle that we fight, Jesus has already won the victory for us. Can you say amen to that? 
He has already won the victory. Because the battle is not against flesh and blood. The battle is between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. It is between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. The battle is between life and it is between death. But Jesus Christ, when he died on that cross, the enemy thought that he was getting the best of Jesus, right? But hallelujah, praise be to God because when Jesus was nailed on that cross, the little did he know that death is going to die on the cross when Jesus died. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know when Jesus died for you, he did better than that. He did not just die for you, but he did die as you. He died as you. Because for the way, the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. So Jesus took upon your sin and he died on the cross. And he died as you. And when he died on the cross, death died with him. Hallelujah. And as a result, the gift of God is given to you and I. That is the eternal life in Christ Jesus. So we got to fight the right battle, therefore. Okay? We got to know this profound truth about the battle. So we are not fighting for victory, but we are fighting to advance the victory we have in Jesus Christ. Can someone say amen to that? Right? We are not fighting for victory, but we are fighting to advance the victory that we have in Jesus Christ. We are not fighting for the truth, but we are fighting to propagate the truth. Who, who is Jesus Christ? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We are not fighting for peace, but we are fighting to declare the Prince of Peace over Sri Lanka. Hallelujah. That's what we are fighting for. That's our battle. We are not fighting for our life, but we are fighting to share the abundant life we have in Christ Jesus. Church, we are already victorious. That's why the enemy wants to keep you out of battle. Because when you're out of battle, enemy knows that, that we will never experience victory. This nation will never experience victory. But we battle from the place of victory. We don't battle from the place of defeat. We start from the place of victory. And we will go from victory to victory hallelujah we will go from faith to faith we will go from strength to strength so today you may feel the enemy has got the best of you but I am here to tell you today if you have Jesus Christ in your life as your Savior no demon in hell can come against you can stand against you because I'm here to tell someone that you are not defeated. Come on, tell, tell yourself, I am not defeated. You are not defeated. You are not knocked out. But Jesus Christ has won the battle for you. He has won the victory for you. Because death is swallowed up in victory. Death, oh death, where is your victory? Oh death, where is your sting? I want you to just close your eyes for a moment. You know, as we sing this chorus, I really want you to believe this with all your heart. This is a call for battle. You need to rise up. You need to rise up. You need to rise up. By His stripes, you are healed. By His name. 